we going to have a good week, boss? I think we are, Benny. A very good week. <laughs> Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm the Missing Zog. Welcome back for more Grand Theft Auto Online. Laid back grinding. Yeah, long awaited laid back grinding. Oh, sunrise. Perfect time to start. Times it probably like five in the morning, six in the morning. All right. Listen, you do realize about my MBA, don't you? <laughs> she loves telling people about her MBA. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got a busy day in Los Santos today. I think I pretty much have everything ready to go. And I don't think there's really any double money um, events involved in anything we're going to be doing today. Um, but uh, so it's all straight up regular amounts today. But yeah, but we're going to be using some new things like our Oppressor Mark II. Been using that a lot. So let's start out here. So first thing we're going to do is uh, is uh, work on our crate warehouse. So I don't usually don't do the crate warehouse very often in laid back grinding because it takes so long to fill up and such a lot of work. Um, sometimes I leave it almost half full and uh, and complete it when the double money events go out. Um, it's a really great time to make money when they do double money for that. Yeah, but in general, they're always a great money way to make money, especially when your other businesses are already building up stuff. You can go run crate missions in the meantime. So let's have a sit down. All right. Yeah, many requests for laid back grinding <laughs> and requests for an x80 proto so i think i might get uh, the grotty x80 proto i'm a big grotty fan and i don't have an x80 proto yet and they're on 40 percent off for uh, just today only so i'm sure they'll come back on sale again though but they're on sale again for today so i think i might try to grab one tonight yeah let's log in the missing zark that's me all right head over to special cargo now you can run this from your terabyte as well but I still run it from the office here and there too. Where is map? So there we go, 95%. Yep, 105 crates out of 111. So we should have two more missions to go, three crate missions. So we'll go run one of those and then we'll run again uh, in a few minutes. So we got art and antiques. All right, let's buy that. Three crates. All right, so generally speaking, it's uh, recommended to buy three crates at a time for the crate warehouses. Um, they are cheaper at the one crate and two crate levels, but it's not worth your time. Oh, well, special cargo right now, Penny. Hi there. Hi. How can I help you? Let's get our personal How vehicle do down the children? bottom, terabyte. They're bringing your two. personal vehicle around right now. Thank you very much, Penny. Yeah, so a large crate warehouse, which is the best way to make money at this business. The medium is okay, but the large is better. The small is generally not worth it, unfortunately. But the large crate warehouse takes 37 three crate missions to fill up. So that's a lot of missions. I've sent the collection point to your GPS. Make the pickup and bring the goods to the warehouse. Should be straightforward. Oh, uh, All right. Yeah, Good to hear, Penny. I know I'm a few months late with my payments. <laughs> All right, let's hop on. All right, let's have a look at the map, too. Okay, so there is my crate warehouse right there. And we've already launched the mission to buy three. And this icon is still on the map. So we'll see if it uh, is changes the next time I do this. But basically, guys, there's a little bit of a trick that seems to work. If you see your crate warehouse on the map, it means that there's three different uh, crates that I've got to pick up. So unfortunately, that means we're going to have to do three quick trips after whatever mission is that we do right now. So I'll have to wait and see. Now, if there was no icon there, if I went on the map and there was nothing there, you know, instead of that, it was just a blank spot, then that would mean that there's only a single vehicle a single truck or something like that so it's kind of a handy way you can tell if it's a single vehicle or not it doesn't really change anything as far as the mission goes but it can help you with if you know if you need uh, friends with you or not or separate vehicles or not or or just simply gives you a heads up if you're going to be traveling back and forth a lot what to expect but from there it's hard to say what to expect if we're going to be a nice easy run or if this is going to be a mission of some sort so there's a variety of different missions for this. Oh yeah, somebody stole our stuff. The doors are open. So we gotta go get it back. Dead guys. Alright, someone got it. Dragger. You die. There we go, he's dead. Let's zoom down here and pick up this one that we can pick up. Oh, I meant to swoop. And pick it up. <laughs> hey. There we go. It's usually not that sensitive. And we'll get this guy before he gets away any further. Right there. Alright. 
So unfortunately, oh, good, we're on our own. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about those two crates. You gotta leave them there if you're solo, playing alone like me right now. But if you had friends with you or, or a friend, you can make this a little quicker and they'd pick up one crate and away you'd go. Or if you're in the same vehicle, you can pick up two and hop in the same vehicle together. But doing this solo is easy. It's not too bad of a, of a mission. It's easy. Now, from now, there will be um, no real uh, targets from here and there. So now we can just go back and forth and pick up those others. On some missions, there's still enemies, but when you're flying over them in a helicopter or, uh, or the Oppressor Mark II like this, you know, it's usually not a problem to get away from them and keep away from them. Usually don't even have to battle them unless you want to. I quite often just kind of ignore them and fly right over and bring my stuff into the cargo warehouse as quickly as I can. So it's not exposed for too long. I also find it's quicker to actually get off the bike and go in. So then I can just turn around and go back out. Now if I pulled up to that little, uh, oh, <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes it's not faster, depending if the bike rolls over or if I roll over. <laughs> but uh, if everything goes well, that's a faster way. But if I had to pull into the yellow uh, vehicle icon, it tends to um, uh, put you inside the crate warehouse. Um, just inside though, just inside your office, not very far inside. But you have to run back through your crate warehouse a tiny bit, and through the office and then back through the door. So it's just a few seconds longer than it is to just hop off the bike and go right back out the door. Now that's on the last run, sometimes I, I hop in that vehicle thing, because on the last run I don't have to run back out for another crate. Yeah, so that was three crates, and they don't cost very much. It's 18,000, so um, I think that's 6,000 each. Yeah, 6,000 each. So not very much. So if somebody comes along and blows up our crates right now, you know, don't get all mad about it. Well, you know, it, it might be upsetting. It's kind of annoying and it's kind of grieferish to do it because it's really only worth six grand. Like it's kind of more annoying than it is profitable to go bothering somebody for this stuff, at least at this stage, right? But nonetheless, if somebody bothers you, don't let it bother you too much because it's only, um, that's a lot of bothers, isn't it? That I just said, <laughs> but don't let it upset you too much because it's only six grand each. And it's quite normal to lose a couple of them, you know. Um, uh, so it's 37 three crate missions to fill up your large crate warehouse, which is 111 crates. But it is quite normal to lose a few on the way. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes you fire missiles when you shouldn't. Sometimes explosions get over, get carried away. Um, you do have to watch out not to blow up your cargo on these missions. Okay, there are different types of cargo missions. I don't want to confuse you guys, but there's things like the air freight missions where you can blow up the vehicle and then take the cargo and go. Um, there's nightclub battles where you can blow up the vehicle and take the cargo and go. Um, you cannot do that with the CEO crate missions. If you blow up the cargo, it's usually blown up, so be careful. There's a, a couple of select missions where they tell you to get the guys, um, you know, to blow them up like you see me um, kill those guys at the beginning of this mission. But other than things like that, do not use more missiles than you need. Um, do not blow things up. <laughs> It's so the number one way things get lost to me. And the number one way that people that uh, help out tend to blow up things is they tend to go in hot, as it's called, you know, and blow up everything that moves, and, and you tend to take out the cargo with it. But, like I said, if that happens, don't worry too much. Just six grand, and there is a couple minute uh, cooldown timer before you can order another three. I think it's like three minutes, I believe, somewhere around that. It's not very long. But uh, if you really don't like that cooldown timer, and you like these CEO crate missions, a lot of people buy two large crate warehouses and then you can go back to back and then there's no cooldown timer so you could bring three to the one uh, warehouse and then three to the other and th back and forth back and forth you can have five crate warehouses in total but that's a lot now there are some players out there who do do that and they really cash out on the double money events you know they'll kind of wait around on them but I wouldn't recommend that kind of money being spent unless you're serious about it Although one of them is definitely worth it. Two of them if you really like it. Five if you really, really like it. But like I said, when they do those payouts of the double money events, I'm, I'm definitely jealous. They, uh, they are definitely a big profit at that point. Yeah, when those events are on. Which is a few times every year at least. It's hard to say when Rockstar does them. Alright, this is our last one. Still alone. That's good. Now, the crate warehouse can be raided, like pretty much everything, which annoys me. It's my, one of my number one complaints about the game is all the raids. Um, once you're a, a, a kingpin, if you will, you know, once you bought all the stuff like I have, um, 
there's a lot of different things that can be raided and it's kind of annoying. Uh, I've said before, I wish they'd just get rid of the raids entirely. And if they won't get rid of the raids entirely, then at least put it on one raid timer instead of everything having its own. Like you can literally be uh, raided back to back. So you can be raided by your crate warehouse, then you could be raided by your nightclub, then you could be raided... No, you have to be doing this stuff, mind you. You have to be joining your MC. But, you know, in your MC, you could be raided by your cocaine and then your weed place, and then, you know, there's no limit to how many times you can be raided. And I think that's kind of wrong. They should... You know, once you've been raided, it should kind of give you a break for a couple hours, in my opinion, so that you can have fun with your friends without having to worry about being raided all the time. Oh, I meant to go in that little cargo, the wheel spot, to show you. Oh, well. Yeah, if I go in that wheel spot, it usually brings me to right here. Which is not a big deal, but I find it's faster to go in the door there. There, there. Now, I'm going to retire right now. So, so you go menu. So there's your interactive menu. As many of you guys know, whenever you join your MC or your secure serve uh, company, or your VIP company, if you don't have a company, it always hops up, pops up to the top of the list. Now, whenever you're not doing anything, it's a good idea to retire. So here we are in the CEO crate warehouse, and as I was saying, they can be raided, um, but that's after they're half full. So if you fill this up to about 49%, it's generally supposed to be safe. After 50%, it starts increasing the chance that you will be raided. Um, now, you can only be raided in your company. So right now, because I'm out of my company and retired, I should not be able to be raided. Although I say should all the time, because as you guys know, this is a Rockstar game. You know, it's got glitches and bugs on a good day. So I wouldn't count on everything being 100% all the time. I've been raided in my MC businesses when, when I was in my company. Only once, though, and that's like a couple years. So only once. So exceptionally rare that these bugs happen. But uh, still, keep in mind, you know, you never know. Now that said, um, you shouldn't be rated under half, under 50% of your warehouse being full. And that should be the same as far as I know for the medium warehouse too. So under half. Now the vehicles, uh, a little while ago I did a, vid a video on that and I talked about the vehicles and it's important to get them upgraded. Um, now some people wondered why I didn't mention the smaller vehicles. Well generally speaking with a large warehouse you don't see the smaller vehicles. I don't see the little Cuban 800s and stuff like that. Now there is a chance I will see three Cuban 800s. Maybe we'll even see that today. But that's kind of rare actually. I think that's more like a full medium warehouse cell. But for the large warehouse, uh, large crate warehouse, it's kind of rare that you see those. For the most part you see the Titan all the time for the plane. And then the, uh, the, the uh, tugboat for the water and uh, the uh, brocade trucks. Yeah, the three brocade trucks. And I think for a lot of the last few times that we've done it, we've gotten the brocade trucks, which are awesome. In my opinion, probably the, one of the quickest, easiest, fastest ways. Um, you know, I almost want to get that today, but for you guys, I wanted to get something different because I think we've gotten that last time. That said, you know, personally, I wouldn't mind the brocades because they're, uh, they're a nice, quick way of uh, doing anything. So let's head out. So as I've said before in our laid-back grindings, keep in mind that uh, everything I'm doing, you guys can generally do faster, you know, than I am because I'm talking away and taking my time and being laid back. And um, on top of that, you guys could have friends helping you or other random players if you feel comfortable enough with it. I think I'm going to start playing with random players coming up in the future, you know, things like that. I've got enough money I can afford them blowing up some stuff here and there, so, so I'm not too worried about it anymore. So there's my terabyte services on my interactive menu. I'm going to call it in. We're going to do one of my favorite new missions, which many of you guys are very familiar with. Yeah, diamond shopping. Diamond robbery. So, oh wait, it should pop in any moment now. There it is. And I did fire some missiles from my oppressor earlier, so I should probably reload it. Bring it in back, and it automatically reloads here. It only has fire. It only has 20 at a time, so it's a good idea to reload it. 20 is not very many, really. All right, guys. So I'm probably already used up a lot of the timer talking to you guys um, uh, for the crate missions, but we're going to run one of the missions anyway. Usually, I'm quicker than this, like I was saying, and uh, I'd have a timer to wait. So I'd usually join up my company and I'd uh, I'd uh, run one of these missions in the meantime. So if you have a nightclub. Unfortunately, you have to have one of those. And if you have a terabyte truck, which I'm in right now, you need a nightclub in order. You need a or a nightclub in order to have a terabyte truck. Then you can run these missions that we're about to run. So I'm just joining in the company and quickly getting into my mission to avoid any kind of raid time. And then the client jobs are right here. These are the missions that I kind of like. Now these missions have big, long uh, cooldown timers, uh, roughly about 25 minutes. I think maybe half an hour. But uh, 25 minutes is what it shows up by the time I get here. So they're not a mission that really, uh, for me, replaces things like Headhunter and other things like that, because you can only do them once in a while. But still, it's a good idea to do them. They're okay. quick and easy. You're going to steal a diamond shipment from them. 
Angelico fine jewelry. Yes, we are, Paige. Yes, we are. Way to go. She tells you this every time. Every time. <laughs> no way to hang up the phone on her or anything. She just somehow in my ear. Yep. So here we are at Vangelico Diamonds, almost. So you can tell by that little tower right over there. That little, I don't know what you'd call it, artsy-fartsy little tower there. That's how I kind of see it. And I usually pull in over here, but it depends on where your terabyte truck is. So there's a bank, and we're going to get some diamonds out of it. We've done this mission before, but I've gotten quite good at it these days. A lot of people like it because it's a nice, fast mission. So I'm going to kill these two guys. I do, Paige. Don't worry. Don't worry. Alright, let's hop off. Get our gun out. Oh. You got a shot off mommy there. Usually I can stop them before they can. Grab the diamonds and get out. Alright, let's get on this and get away. And there we go. Head up into the sky to avoid the cops, and that's it. Now from here you can call Lester to lose the cops, but I find you actually really don't need to. You know, once you're high enough in the sky, the cops don't see you. And um, by the time you get to the drop-off point, they're already cleared. Now, I've done this mission many times. You, many of you guys probably have too. Uh, so I know exactly where the drop point is. It's right at the winery, right in wine country. And it's right over here. So it's a place you bring many CEO cars to. So I'm very familiar with it already. So I just know kind of where I'm going. So we're going to head over there and drop off the diamonds. And then we're done. And that pays 30 grand. All those missions pay out 30 grand, which is quite nice and easy. Oh no. <laughs> Figures the one time I tell you guys that, be the one time that they spot me at the end. That almost never happens. Tell you go telling somebody, of course. <laughs> Try to show somebody. What's up, pal? Okay, so you're in serious right. trouble, Thank and you, you need Lester. my help. Okay, okay. There's the buyer right there. There she is. There she is. All right, and that's that. We can retire. Ooh. Yeah, so the Oppressor Mark II is a great way for doing this. A lot of people have wondered, is this my new uh, get-around vehicle? And I'd say yes, partially. Partially. Um, it's a great vehicle. It's an awesome grinder tool. You know, it really is. Um, but, oh, <laughs> but on the long trips, I find that it's still, it's not as fast as people think it is. You know, if you're traveling across the map, or even halfway across the map, you're still better off in something like a pyro or something faster. The Akula or something like that. If you have friends with you, it only seats one, so it doesn't really help for teammates unless they have their own with them. Like they have their own Oppressor Mark IIs as well. Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't work for all situations, basically. Uh, but, and, and the pyro is still faster, but sometimes it's quick and easy to spawn one of these. They spawn almost anywhere because they're so small and you jump in and go so fast. You don't have to go to your way to pick up the, uh, the aircraft like you, you know, the Mark II like you would an aircraft. And uh, in that sense, it's quite fast. And that said, it is fast to get around town. You do want to hold down your all-wheel brake, whatever button that is for you. See, I'll bring up my wings. So when you fly around, as people were telling me when I got it, the glider wings come out. And it is a little bit more uh, easier to handle, you know, at first with the wings out. And that's basically your flying mode. If you hold down the all-wheel brake, whatever button that is for you, that'll drop those, uh, those little fins back in and you'll drop down. But mind you, while you're flying along, that actually makes you go faster. So I'm going to bring out those fins. And we'll see here. So I'm flying along. It's about 110, 108 right now. If I bring in the fins, we go right up to 130. Now you can get it going faster here and there by five miles, by little dives, and by using the booster. The booster, generally speaking, doesn't really give you much more top speed, though. It just helps you with acceleration. So it's a good idea to use the booster as a way to get up and going, rather than a way to go faster. Yeah. All right, let's head in. Uh, fix my view. And I'm going to put on more body armor. I know not everybody uses it, but I like body armor sometimes. It saves my life many times. 
And it's not a big deal on many missions, but sometimes I'm happy to have it on. All right, so now we're ready for uh, another crate mission. So let's get that going. So we're gonna join into our company. And like I said, I'm gonna avoid any what they call inactive time um, by, by jumping right in. So you can only be rated when you're in the company or in your MC for your MC businesses. Now you can only be rated when you're in inactive time, not active time. So that means when you're not already on a mission or on a cell mission. I'm describing it like this because some people don't get it that even when you're flying back and forth, like after a mission or flying back home or any of that kind of stuff, that's act inactive time. That's not active time. So you should retire during that. So only be active during a mission if you can help it. And as little as possible outside of that if you want to avoid raids. So I'm going to hop in there. And watch, I'll probably get raided today with all this brilliant brilliant ideas. But at least then you'll know what I'm talking about, the annoyance of it. Because if our crate warehouse gets raided, it's all our stuff on the line. And you don't even get profit. If you win, you just simply don't lose all your stuff. It's a horrible, horrible mission, if you ask me. So there's those cooldown timers that I was talking about. And now we're going to go over here to special cargo. Now this time we're going to order some narcotics to finish it off. Why not? Zero gas. That's our big one. All right, let's go. Special cargo ready for collection. Go get it and bring it to the warehouse. All right. Thank you very much, Benny. Let's close our visor. There we go. Let's check the map. Oh, see guys, no icon. No icon. There's no, no icon at our uh, crate warehouse. So that means that we should be getting a single vehicle this time around. Which is nice. No more three trips. So one thing I noticed about the Oppressor Mark II, now that I've had it for a little while, is, is the GPS. See the GPS down there? It's giving me a route and everything. Now you, you want to get in the habit of ignoring that because you're flying, so just, you know, kind of fly in the direction of, of your target. But that said, I wish it was like that all the time, you know, sometimes. When I'm in an aircraft and stuff, um, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes, like, you can always pause and check your map, but that's a hard thing to do when you're in a jet fighter or something like that. So sometimes when those little targets, like, say, that green crate icon, like we're looking at right now, where I'm going, you know, sometimes you don't know how far away it is, you know. Right now I don't know how far away it is. And I can check my map, but that means I have to go, uh, you know, I have to look away while I'm flying. It's nice that that little GPS actually gives me a, a, a distance. So on the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner, I should say, of the map, you'll see a distance. It says 2.2 kilometers until that just took it away from us. Find the vehicle. Someone's taking us for a ride. Multiple trackers. Okay. Anyway, it, it, on that GPS, it gives you a distance tracker. And I kind of like that because it gives you an idea how far across the map you're going. You know, 10 clicks or one click. That's a van right there. Oh, and I think we just got lucky. All right. Now, some people say if you're watching the map, it's the last one that shows up that has your stuff, but I can never tell <laughs> how fast it shows up. Oh. Ugh. I was going to say, he won't stop. He'll stop for other pedestrians, but not you. So watch out for that. And I realized that, remembered that at the last second. <laughs> and shot him before he ran us over. We go, coming through. <laughs> oh, look at this guy. That's right, my road. Sprunk Extreme Van, look at <laughs> Narcotics delivery. Okay. So, as predicted, it's a single vehicle. With a little bit of a mission between. I'm gonna see if I can grab a little coffee while we're driving here. Oh, that's better helps me and it helps the voice okay so now we are on way to the uh, CEO crate warehouse three clicks away and it'll be full and then we really want to sell so the full large crate warehouse costs 666,000 so it costs me 666,000 to fill it up and then it profits 1 million uh, 554,000 yeah so that's not bad so it actually sells for a total of 2.2 million. Now, this is one of those businesses that, that there's kind of a debate. Are you better to uh, do it on your own or on quiet sessions? Or are you better off to do it uh, on a busy session? Now, in a busy session, you're risking all your $2 million being lost. Most people would think that's crazy. And I kind of lean that way. It is crazy. you got to watch out for bad people blowing your stuff up. That said, um, a lot of people do argue that all the bonuses you get do add up. So I'm not sure what exactly the bonuses are. I think they're 1% for every player in the, uh, in the um, 
the session, and I think there's a minimum. I think it needs like 10 players for it or something. But uh, but yeah, if you imagine like 20 extra players in a session oop, crashing through, that'd be 20% extra money, and that's a lot on 2.2 million dollars. So you also get bonuses for extra associates helping you. So if you did it on a busy session with associates, you can make a lot of extra money. Even on a half busy session, you can see bonuses of $400,000 on a big sale like this one that we're going to do. So some people argue that if you did that all year long, even despite the fact that some people might blow up your stuff every now and again, you would still come out making more money than you would doing it safely like I am now. Or semi-safely. So that's up to you guys. Right now, I'm going to start doing some uh, more public sessions for our laid-back grindings, too, in the future, possibly, live, things like that. But sometimes, for a friend in the past, it's been easier, you know, it's a lot of times it's easier to explain things when you're on your own, you know, or, or it's quiet sessions. A lot of these missions, um, when you bring in other players, every mission starts becoming about how to deal with other players, you know, and not every mission, but a lot of missions, you know. And a lot of people want to learn about the mission, not necessarily how to fight other players, because most people already know that that's part of the game, that you have to watch out for them. In we go. So, by being alone, it kind of keeps it simple. It keeps the mission. And I always remind you guys to watch out for other people. As you should already know. <laughs> we filled it. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's retire for a second here. Although, I think I'm going to just... Uh, oh, I pressed the wrong button. No, I did. Yeah, I did. Second there, I thought I pressed the wrong button. thought I quit out of it. All right, so now she's all full. Front to back. Lots of antiques, animal goods, art, jewels, all kinds of stuff. Really should be worth more money or take it home. <laughs> yeah, lots of good stuff. All right. So I think we covered all the information about the crate warehouse, or at least the large crate warehouse, which is generally what I recommend. And we've covered them before, so you guys can look through on our channel if you want to see more sales or more information about them. As far as I know, they're all still up to date. Um, some of them got older video, or have become older videos, but I don't think any of the information in them is out of date, other than the raids that I was mentioning earlier. Um, once upon a time, you could just have your crate warehouse like I have now um, almost full. So if you had just one single crate missing, you would not be raided unless it was full. But nowadays, unfortunately, once it's over 49% or 50% and above, then you start increasing your chance of raids. And it increases as it goes up to 100%, okay? Now, people want to know why I sell it at 100%. Well, because you get all these bonuses for selling. Um, I tried to find an answer for you guys as to what the bonus is for selling a, a top one, but it's a hard answer to get because as you go along, the crates pay out more. So, so um, basically, like the last crate, gives you an extra seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 worth of money on your thing. So that's a pretty good mission, actually. But it's not just that last crate. It's the last handful. As you go up, the crate profit increases, too. So it kind of uh, keeps you... Um, well, if you ask me for top profit, you want to be full, even though that's maximum risk, too. So let's see. What do you guys think? you think I'm going to get the steamboat or the tugboat? Or do you think I'm going to get uh, the Titan? I haven't gotten a Titan in a long time. Hmm. I wonder what I'm going to get. Yeah, so, and make sure you upgrade your vehicles, as I said earlier, guys. Just to remind you guys, you definitely want to do that if you get into this kind of business, especially the plane. Yeah, especially the plane, the Titan. There's certain missions where, especially where you're solo, where there's guys attacking you and there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. Now, if you have an armored Titan, it's possible you can, you can survive it. With an unarmored Titan, it's very hard, maybe even impossible. Yeah, I've died one of those, I died in one of those very same missions a long, long time ago. <laughs> I think that was our big fail, I think. All right, here we go. So let's sell for 2.2 million and 20,000. 111 crates, objective in investment limited. All right, here we go, everybody. Whew, always makes me nervous. <laughs> Big sales. Ah, oh, well, that's easy, but we're ready to go, boss. Not much variety. The goods are loaded and ready to be taken to the drop off. All right, Look thanks, out for buddy. hijackers and get this deal done. All right, I don't remember her saying that before. Look out for hijackers. Is there something you know that I don't know? I hope not, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was hoping to get some variety, but I'm not complaining. The brigades are a nice way of doing it. They're quick, they're easy, they're straightforward. Most people know how to drive in the game. You know, it's kind of like, well, you know, get better at it. It's kind of one of those givens. It, it takes a little bit of time to, for some people to learn how to fly and things like that, so... 
Yeah. Now that said, they are a strange truck. They are very, actually, uh, very good performing trucks. Very fast. Very um, agile. They're just weird, you know, for me. I think it's just me. I'm not sure how many of you guys experience the same thing. But I just found them to be a very odd vehicle to drive. You know, just the way they move. But I don't want it to sound like I'm complaining. You know, at first it can come off like that, but then once you get used to it, you realize it's actually a, a decent truck. You know, for a big truck compared to like things like the awful post-op trucks and things like that. You know, it's a, it's a good truck. But uh, it's kind of strange at first. I describe it like driving a shopping cart backwards kind of thing, you know, like a grocery store cart. You know, it's a little funny and, and as you get up to speed, it gets a little hard to keep it in control if it bounces around. Too much. Turns and stuff. Uh, so two kilometers out, we're just rushing across town. Coming through, coming through. Just barely missing people. <laughs> oh, going all the way up there. Usually I go to a, a building that's somewhere right around here. I think it's a block over to the left. Yeah, to wait till I get there, but uh, I'm not sure I've ever done this spot before. So, as you guys can tell, it's kind of random. So sometimes you don't see any spots for a long time or, or whatnot ever. Or like the Brocades, I think I've gotten the Brocades luckily for the last, I don't know, three or four crate cells. So it's been pretty good. I'm sure a lot of people would like to know how I did it. I don't know. <laughs> it's just been lucky. Very lucky. But on that note, I could get the Titan three times in a row. Or each one, one at a time. You never really know. Sometimes it's hard to put together videos um, to show you guys because of that reason, because it's random, you know, it's, uh, it, it could be tomorrow that I see a certain mission, it could be a month, you know, before a certain mission comes up. Technically never, but I would like to think that eventually it'll show up. Okay. There we go, in here. Well, that's a, that's a mean turn there. They did that on purpose. They said this is the house. That way they got to turn all the way around like that. All right, let's call in. Hopefully I'm not calling in at the wrong spot. Crest personal vehicle. That should bring in our oppressor. Mark two. Oh, no Molotovs needed. There we go. Now I tend to run looking at me and things like that. You guys will notice when I'm spawning in things because quite often the game tries to hide the spawn. You know, it kind of tries to make it like magic so it shows right up when you're not looking kind of thing. So sometimes you can help the game to uh, bring the vehicle closer to you by looking away from where you want it to be. So if you don't want it down one direction of the street and you want it down the different direction of the street, you know, um, try to look away from where you want it and try to look at where you don't want it. You know, does that make sense, hopefully? Yeah. So as long as you're looking at something, it won't spawn over there, usually. Sometimes it will, though. You know, you, the game's a funny game. But generally speaking, it won't look where you're spawning. So I kind of take the advantage of that, and that way I can uh, uh, take advantage of it and, uh, and use it. Yeah. So we're heading back for a, another truck, another brigade truck. These give you half-hour timers, which are pretty good timers for these kinds of missions. We're still alone. You should check people and uh, check often for anybody around. You can always use the ghost company if you ever needed to. And that way you're hidden off the map. So you can still use your CEO buzzard. And I still do. I still like having it as a backup vehicle or, or like I said, with teammates, something that can carry more than just one person. But otherwise, that oppressor mark II is handy for doing what I just did. Yeah. Now on that note, guys, um, um, this is, you know, for many veterans, this is kind of a simple trick, simple tip, I should say. But some newbies and, and some people have played a while haven't quite caught on to this, you know, like it took me a little while. I was always doing it the old fashioned way for a long time, um, um, bringing a new vehicle. So I call up my mechanic. I call up Johnny. He's down here at the bottom somewhere. There he is right there in the mechanic. And I call in my vehicle. That's the slowest way of getting a vehicle these days. So if you guys can help it, if you know there's a vehicle that you want to use, guys, you know, maybe your Kruma, maybe your Oppressors, you know, your Master Mark II, maybe something else, um, of the regular vehicles, I mean, like uh, bikes and cars, what you want to do is uh, call it in ahead of time when you start your session. So when you start the session, get the vehicle you like or call it in. Uh, when we started this session, I, uh, I got my Oppressor Mark II with Penny. So I got her to call it in. 
So at that point, it becomes my last vehicle. And then it's loaded in the game as my last vehicle used. So at that point, when you're far away like I am now, you can bring up your interactive menu, go down to vehicles, and then say request personal vehicle, and it'll bring you the last vehicle that you're using, our presser mark two. Doing that is the fastest way of, of uh, spawning a vehicle. So I'm gonna just get through this intersection. And I'll show you guys what I mean. If I just bring it down here, I can click it and write like that. You know, it's way faster than calling the mechanic and waiting for Johnny to answer. And sometimes he doesn't answer and it's gonna be annoying that way. So wherever possible, try to use that vehicle's menu if you don't know about that already. But like I said, you need to have the last vehicle loaded already. You know, if you, it won't let you change vehicles that way. Yeah, but it's a good thing to get in the habit of having the vehicle you want ready when you load up the game. And then it's a, uh, then you can call it in quick and easy. It also tends to spawn faster too, as you guys are going to see right, right up here. Like Johnny, I don't know, it's hard to say, but Johnny feels like 30 seconds ish and using the vehicle menu feels like it's 15, 20 seconds ish. It's very comparable, but it seems like it's a little bit faster through the menu. Oh, this menu, this button here. Cool. All right, uh, nope. vehicles, request personal vehicle. Now I could also go secure me serve menu and go into my CEO vehicles and call it my buzzard too. And that would be very fast. But I think the oppressor mark two kind of sort of beats it across town. So very close though, these two vehicles, believe it or not. It feels like the oppressor mark two is faster, but it's not as fast as it feels. Its main speed is that it can just fly right over things like I just did. Yep. You don't have to worry about roads or lakes or anything. And it gets off the ground quicker than the buzzard. Makes good time. It can certainly spawn in tighter spots than most other vehicles. Sometimes the oppressor will spawn in places where no other vehicle can, it seems to me. Or no, uh, nothing but uh, bikes, anyway. Yeah, there's certain beaches and stuff where almost nothing spawns, but you can get your Oppressor Mark II to spawn there, which is kind of cool. So it's an excellent grinder's tool. Unfortunately, it's also an excellent griefer's tool, unfortunately. Now, using the vehicle menu spawn like you just seen me do, when you're in your CEO company, when you're in your MC, your motorcycle club, you can spawn it even faster through the motorcycle club menu. It's super fast through that. I'm just not talking about that because we're not in the motorcycle club. We're in the CEO company right now. There we go. Last brigade truck. Let's get away. All right. Away we go. Yeah, so a lot of people also like the Oppressor Mark IIs um, for being able to quickly spawn and defend your product. Although, I would tell you guys that that's kind of iffy. You know, it's hard to do that. But it's... The, probably the best vehicle for doing it if you're going to try. So if somebody was attacking me right now, I could try to find a place to park this. You know, try to find a, a garage or maybe underneath that bridge. That wouldn't be a good spot, but some place that it could be somewhat protected from their aerial attacks. And then I would jump on my Oppressor Mark II, try to kill them, and then get out of there. You know, like I said, though, it's not, as you can probably already tell, it's it's not a very, oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> bad day to be on the streets tonight. But yeah, as you can imagine, that would be a bad, you know, not a very good strategy. But it's better than nothing. And it uh, tends to work faster than other weaponized vehicles. Because like I said, the oppressor uh, tends to spawn in quickly and tends to spawn in places where other vehicles don't. Good time. Look out. <laughs> Coming through. Whoa. Avoid the explosions. <laughs> now these are semi-tough vehicles, but and I've got them armored too. But we still don't want to put that to task. It's got a lot of ramming power, as you guys can tell. It just blew up that bike pretty easily. Alright. So on these missions, um, yeah, if you lose everything... If people came along and blew up my three trucks, I would literally lose everything. All $2.2 .2 million, all 666000 of my cost. And all my time. 
So how do you avoid that? Well, it's very hard, but what you can do is quit the game if things go wrong right away. Most of the time, as long as you don't finish the mission, don't finish the cell, you just quit right away after somebody's harassing you or blowing up your stuff. And usually when you reload the game, it'll penalty you typically about three crates. Now, I think sometimes you can give more, but only, but you know, usually three or six. I think it's only a few. And then you so basically do those crates again, and then you're full again. So that's the best way to do it. It's better, you know, do not finish that mission and lose all your stuff. Don't do that. Yeah. But it's still kind of precarious doing these missions. Ah, uh, figures my buzzard be. Oh, uh, I can't spawn it twice, that's right. <laughs> Ah, there we go. <laughs> I didn't feel like uh, jumping out and changing it. There we go. Oh, attacking enemies. What are you talking about? Attacking enemies. Yeah, let's use our Widowmaker this time. So I guess that's what she meant about hijackers. But these aren't hijackers. They're attacking me afterwards. What's with that? Well, they're going to be coming to the gate, so that makes it easy. Come get some. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> There's more of them coming. Yeah, we'll just put on some body armor. Can't do any harm. Stay away from my money. <laughs> He's hit. He's hit. Help him. <laughs> Next. Next. Come on, come get some. You asked for it. Touching my money. No more enemies. Hmm. Now we could always call in. Oh, actually, we should call in something. Like we could have called in our oppressor. We could have called in our APC. We could call in all kinds of awesome stuff. But I'm not too worried about these guys. They're What's fairly easy, as you can tell. Wait. Okay. Let's bring them up here. I can kill them there, but I want to keep any explosions away from that truck over there. Just in case. I think the truck is safe now that it's already been delivered, but just in case. I'm trying to keep them away. Mm. Oh, traffic actually helps us for once. Two more. Where are they? Yeah. All right. We did it. <laughs> we definitely did it. Oh, got a cough. One second. Excuse me. Hmm. Coffee. Oh, man, that's much better. All right. Now, if I had other warehouses, I could quit. I could retire. But I don't really have to worry about it anymore. Well, I do have a nightclub that we have to go sell, so I should worry about that. But I do want to hear Penny's phone call. I haven't heard her in a while. See if she's happy. There's all our bills. Too many bills. <laughs> you can avoid bills if you change sessions. But it's usually not worth your time too much to worry about it. But my uh, MC bills, my motorcycle club bills, are 30000 for the employees that I'll pay right away. If I wanted to avoid that, I could change sessions. But I'm not going to bother. How come Penny's not calling me today? What's going on, Penny? Hmm. Well, that's it over to the nightclub. Or should we do the bunker? Hmm. 
Yeah, we'll do the nightclub because it's in risk of, uh, it's at risk of being raided, so we should get out of the way with first. Whoop, oh, wrong button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot of reactions like that flying something like this. <laughs> yeah, strange. No penny call this time. Hmm. Oh, well. She's busy counting all the millions that we just brought in. <laughs> so, we're still on our own. Now, here we are at the nightclub. All right, guys. So, the nightclub. Uh, and uh, for just today only, so this won't help out uh, anybody who's watching this when in, uh, outside of today, just the day it's uploaded. Um, what is today? Today is June 5th. Yeah. So, um Today is the last day of the current event, and uh, there is a current uh, added on event of a bonus 250,000 if you do any nightclub sells. And there's also a, a sale on all the nightclub uh, link clubs right now too. So if you need to, you can buy a nightclub, and if you source one single thing, now it's better to sell more, but if you source and sell one single thing, you would get a bonus of 250,000 next week. So just so you guys know, that doesn't come in until next week, but you do need to do one nightclub sell to qualify. So like I said, you could do any tiny cell and it should get you the money later. All right, so let's go over to here. Empty out our nightclub, our, uh, our safe. These safes hold up to 70,000, so I've actually kind of let it back up a little bit. It's got 48,000 in there. Looks like my popularity's dropped down a little bit. We should fix that. Fix that with the DJs. That's how I do mine. I don't do the popularity missions these days. I did do uh, 10 of five of them, 10 of them, five of them. Can't remember. There's a few of them you do to uh, unlock the uh, blimp special price, and then after that, I really didn't do any others. Yeah, well, we can sit right here. Oh no, no, we don't want to sit here. I'm gonna get up. <laughs> Just thinking. Yeah. So if you change DJs from this seat, you get the cutscene and uh, with the DJ change, and uh, you go, it automatically spawns you on the nightclub uh, dance floor. And if you don't want to waste that time, you can just go right down to business level one or basement level one, I should say. And uh, then you can change DJs on any of the other floors and it will not give you that cutscene. So it does not make you spawn on the dance floor and walk all the way back through again. Now, just so you guys know, I kind of like that because it means that's how you start the DJ session. So if you want to see a DJ play, uh, play set from start to finish, just ch change DJs. It'll put you out on the DJ floor when you're on the top floor up in the nightclub. And then uh, you can watch the whole set. But if you're in the, not in the mood for it, like me, or you've seen that cutscene many times, you can always just come down here and change them here. So I'm going to go in here, change my DJ, and let's rebook Solomon. There we go. Solomon's been rebooked, so I'll put 10 grand back in. And I'm just popping out just so you guys can see. It doesn't uh, refresh until you go back in again. So now you guys can see my nightclub popularity is filled back up, almost. There's a little touch there. If I wanted to, I could change DJs again right now and fix that. But I'm probably just going to let it drop down some and then just change it again. Now, just you guys know, that's all I do for my popularity. These days, I just change the DJs back and forth, back and forth, as I see that popularity drop down about a half block, block. And that's it. And uh, I still make money. So, you know, I tell people it fe I, it's hard to count it because it's kind of random and rough the way I'm doing it. But it feels like I keep 40 to 60% of the money coming out of the safe. It still goes into my pocket. So... And now on the home screen here, it tells you how much. So nightclub earnings, that's actually been... Um, now, there was a bunch of double money earning uh, weeks and things like that. But $6 million it's made there. So I've made at least 40 to 60% of that money into my pocket instead of going back to DJs. So it's definitely profiting. And the warehouse earnings, we're definitely going to increase that right now. So sell goods. So we're nearly full. We're at uh, 1.5 million right now. I think the most is 1.6 million, something like that. Pharmaceutical research is filling back up 12 out of 20. Now, I did want to mention that to you guys. This kind of froze on me. I was trying to back this all up for you guys, and uh, this was going nowhere. My pharmaceutical research, uh, which I believe is meth. Yeah, kind of mangled that, didn't I? Pharmaceutical research there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know what was with that, but some people run into that. If, if you find your nightclub's frozen or it doesn't seem to be working, now remember, it is slow though, so give it some time because it's very slow sometimes. But uh, I would suggest... Uh, uh, changing your warehouse uh, technician off of it, removing them, and then re-add them later, or change it to a different technician. Many times, just the act of, of removing them and then putting a different technician on gets it uh, going again, and it fixed mine, so they finally started uh, going again. But yeah, these, these should have been filled before these ones, and, and as you guys can tell, it did not. But it did start working again, I think it was at 4 out of 20, so since that, that fix, it's been working for me. 
So just so you guys know, you might want to keep an eye on that. And if you notice that it's not moving, change that. There's my bunker fees coming in, 9,400. All right, now um, nightclubs, it can be rated too, like I was saying too. So um, upgrades, let's go to upgrades here. So there's a security upgrade. So if your nightclub um, has not done a cell mission in four in-game hours, okay, that's that's considered, I believe, in inactive time. So that would mean in your company or in your MC, not doing a mission for four hours, which is actually a lot of time when you think about it. Um, it becomes a risk of it being raided, unfortunately. Now, if you buy the security upgrade, like I have, it changes it to eight hours, doubles the time, so eight hours. Now, just so you guys know, I pretty much have not uh, seen any raids, except for up top, and we'll get to that in a moment. Unfortunately, your nightclubs can also be uh, uh, get a pop-up mission for the DJs, where you've got to help them for your popularity bar. And that's kind of annoying, too. Now, most people don't consider them to be raids, but some people do consider them to be raids because they're a pop-up mission, and they're kind of rude. You know, they, they, you didn't ask for it. It happens to you. And if you say no, you lose popularity, and it goes down. So you actually suffer a penalty if you say no. So to some people, it's basically a raid in disguise when you get those uh, nightclub DJ missions. So remember, the nightclub's kind of like two businesses, up top, the nightclub, and down below in the nightclub warehouse selling area. So just to separate those two in case you guys are getting confused, two different businesses out of the one. And it sources from all your other businesses. It's a good idea to buy all the other businesses to source them from your nightclub. It's a good lazy way of making money. Many people buy the MC businesses and don't even run the MCs. If you don't want to run the MC businesses and you don't like the motorcycle club stuff, you can even save even more money by buying the cheapest properties on the market. So buy the cheapest property locations for the MC businesses and don't upgrade the MC businesses. And then you'll still be able to source at your nightclub like here just fine. So hopefully that makes sense for those of you that know what I'm talking about. So let's go to the sell mission. So we're going to be selling 1.5 million. Um, that's a bunch. And uh, we should be getting the big truck, I imagine, with this many items we're being sold. So I think your van is up to 90 items. And uh, I can't remember. I think it's up to 300 is the middle truck, the mule truck. And above that becomes the, uh, the other truck, the uh, MTL Pounder that you guys should be seeing today. Let's find out. Away we go. Drink. All right, so it seems like I'm not the only one worried about being caught with all this illegal stuff. Hmm. Our buyer is communicating on an encrypted channel, this Sightseer app. Okay. Unscramble the drop locations and make the drops, and maybe no one will get caught and we'll all get paid. There's our MTL bounder. The big truck. She's a nice truck. Compared to other trucks, like I was saying earlier, there's much worse trucks, that's for sure. Okay, use the Sightseer app. Ooh. All right, Sightseer. I know Sightseer. All my Sightseer skills that I've used forever for Sightseer. There we go. Found the numbers. We hacked it. Mad hacking skills. <laughs> now, a little trick for that numbers thing. Sometimes it's a real pain. Um, it will keep resetting. So, you know, if you guys take your time, that's, that's you know, it's unfortunate. But it will keep resetting for you. So don't worry. It'll give you easier numbers eventually. Things like that. Or other numbers, I should say. Usually, I look for two numbers. There's four numbers that it gives you, and I usually just pick two sets out of those numbers and look for those two. You could be wrong, but most of the time that you find the, or those two numbers in a row, it'll be the four numbers that you're looking for. So, I find that's a little shortcut. And again, it doesn't always work. Sometimes it's a, it's a fake two numbers trying to trick you. But most of the time, you find the two numbers you're looking for, it's got the other two you're looking for, you know, the full four numbers connected. And uh, that's, the, that's the set. That's how I sometimes pick them fast. Sometimes. Going through. <laughs> Still on our own. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Gotta say hello back. <laughs> Alright, so we're coming up to our first drop. We've got three drops. Three drops today. And the nightclub ones are kind of strange. They don't show up, at least not for me, so you have to kind of guess where they are. Like, they're on the map, but there's no yellow corona, as you guys can see. Oh, oh, it said drop back there. Let's back it up. Back it up. I think it's this driveway right behind me. It's a little bit high torque. It tends to spin up a lot. I think I should ease up on the gas, I think. Come on. There we go. That is a very strange location. Let's 
Okay, sights are out on the phone. More hacking. All right, unlocked. <laughs> there we go. MTL pounder away. All right, so the nightclub cell. So you've seen the value that was there, the 1.5 million that we're going to make. Um, Tony does take a count of 10% up to $1 million. So uh, one way to, to avoid him taking too much is to do those special offers that you guys seen back on the uh, control screen. It'll give you special offers for things to sell. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you can pick those special offers and they have a hidden bonus. Uh, I think it's 10% hidden in there. So it doesn't show it to you, but it is there if you do the math on it, apparently. So that's how you can uh, uh, offset the Tony's uh, uh, cut to his 10% cut a little bit. Now, another way you can offset his cut is to sell big like we are right now. So he only takes a 10% cut up to 1 million. So that's a $100,000 cut. So the maximum cut for Tony is 100,000. So as you sell above a million, so 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, you're saving 10,000 on every 100,000. So I'm selling this for 1.5 million, I think it was. So we'll be saving roughly 50,000 on Tony's cut because he's only gonna charge us up to that million. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So to a lot of people, I, I, um, I would say generally as good advice for the nightclub to make maximum profit, do the special offers as much as possible and, uh, and otherwise sell big. Yeah. Yeah. Away we go. And on these cell vehicles, it's a good idea to leave the top gun off. Or if you added yours, remove it. I know it, it's, uh, it kind of sucks to waste the money, I suppose. But um, I removed mine, and then you don't have to worry about where you go on the map. There are some places on the map where certain overhangs, certain bridges, will not let you pass with a gun on top. Now, just so you guys know, if you plan your route ahead of time, you know, and you have the time, you can go around those places and still make it in time. But it's... You know, it's uh, you have to be planned ahead of time for it. Otherwise, you might not have enough time. It doesn't give you a lot of time on these missions. I think we're down to 15 minutes right now. I think it's usually about 20 minutes on these missions. There's a couple variations, though. But, yeah. But in my opinion, you're better off to just remove that top gun. And, uh, and then you don't have to worry about fitting anywhere. And from there, you can fit under any bridges needed, as far as I know. Uh, I should have just pulled in. We'll just back in. Hopefully, I can back in. Sometimes it's by your cab, though. Oh. I got caught on a thing there. Got a weird little bounce. Might have to get our atomizer out. Come on. That was my fault, guys. There we go. I thought it was the, the, the little driveway there. As you guys can see, it's stuck on its own crate. <laughs> That's a rock star problem, if you ask me. <laughs> now, I think you'd probably be better off to uh, to be driving and dropping them. That way it drops behind you kind of thing. Sights are out. But yeah, that's really weird that it gets right underneath you like that. And done. Yeah. All that time, a long time ago, playing Sightseer, the Sightseer VIP mission, over and over. <laughs> it pays off. So now, we get to use that hacking in a bunch of missions. <laughs> Alright, so we're on our way to our last drop, which I bet is on the other side of the mountain or something. Looks like it. Three, three and a half clicks away. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, you can see how close that bridge was there, too. I think it'll get through that one, but you can see how close it is. So, like I said, good thing to, good idea to leave that top gun off. Oh. There's uh, a thunderstorm in real life coming near my area. That's good, give me my power flicker just a second ago. <laughs> I'm hoping our laid back grinding is not going to get interrupted, especially in the middle of a nightclub cell. That would really be not good. There's not much I can really do about it other than keep going. 
Keep trucking. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't be losing any power today. Hopefully. Look okay. <laughs> out. Yeah, so it's a nice truck, but it definitely does not turn very well. So as, yeah, you're better off to barely touch your gas. If you got it fully upgraded like I do, just kind of barely touch your gas to get it rolling. Otherwise it tends to spin out like crazy. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's a very stiff vehicle, you know, not much suspension, so. There we go. And this is the one bridge that you cannot pass with that top uh, gun. It's a pain in the butt get through there but if you do have the top gun and you didn't want to remove it you would try to plan a route that would go all the way around the mountain this way and then come around this way yeah. even the cinematic camera struggles in there to, there we go <laughs> all right now I've usually flown right through here and just fly right right off but I'm, I'm thinking I should probably be a little more careful today hmm Oh, I see the spot right down there. You think I can make it? I was careful, I say, and then I do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think we did it. We did it. Yeah. All right. All goods successfully sold to the buyer. All right. My controller's stuck in vibration. 1.4 million dollars plus. Great, okay. Looks like you're done here. I will fiddle the accounts and send you the money. Just another day in the life of nightclub maven, Tony Prince. <laughs> and nightclub owner missing sock. <laughs> Alright, so let's bring in our vehicle. Uh, oh well, yeah. We're far enough away I probably should have called in my pyro or something. But that's okay. I already clicked the button. The oppressor is already on its way. So, there it is over there, somewhere. Oh, the truck already disappeared. Yeah, my controller's stuck in vibration mode, so get going here and it'll fix that, hopefully. Let's head that way. Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, when you have the vibration mode on, which I, I kind of like, on your controllers and things, uh, it uh, it can get stuck on. My controller gets stuck like that all the time. It's kind of annoying. I think it happens when you get into a cutscene like like we just had there for the sale. Sometimes I will be going into my office and it creates a quick vibration, you know, when you're landing, but it uh, it doesn't detect it stopping. So you go into the office or other things like that, and it just the controller just stays vibrating until it detects another new vibration. It's kind of annoying when that happens. I find the easiest way is just find something to create a vibration, you know, the boost on this or kicking something or whatever. And then once you created a new vibration, then that constant vibration goes away. Yeah. Hopefully you guys don't experience what I'm talking about. If you do, you know what I mean. Yeah. All right. So big money. Yeah. Right on. So 1.4 million on that sale, 2.2 .2 on the nightclub on the, on the crate sale and went very well. All right, so let's see. I was going to break it up in some other things, but I wanted to get those sold um, because of that raid risk I was talking about. Yeah. But now that is done. Oh, actually, I should be heading this way. So at this point, I could be doing headhunter missions. I could be doing more terabyte missions. I could go to a CEO car. And we've also got our MC um, uh, businesses to sell, too. All the MC uh, businesses, the cocaine lockup, the uh, cash counterfeiters, the uh, meth lab, the uh, weed farm. Yeah. Documents and forgeries I own for the nightclub, but I do not recommend running the MC business. It is not worth it. Unfortunately, it just does not profit enough. At all, unfortunately. I think that's kind of a mistake on Rockstar's part. But, but it is worth it to have it for the nightclub. So you might want to wait for a, uh, if you don't own it already, wait for a biker uh, business sale of some sort. And then um, uh, buy the cheapest location and use it for sourcing your nightclub. All right, let's head into the, into the bunker. Underground. Oh, 
All right. Yeah, your oppressor can't fly around down here. If you touch the guys, it pops you up. I guess they don't want you flying around down here. Yeah. <laughs> Keep our helmet on? Yeah, why not? Might as well. No, oh, I guess he decided for us. No. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the bunker. The bunker again. The gun running bunker. One of uh, many people's favorite ways of making money. So all these things are great ways of making money. Uh, mangled my mangled my words there. A little bit of coffee. Yeah, so a lot of people wonder, what is the best way of making money? Well, unfortunately, Rockstar has kind of set it up for us guys that they want you to buy everything. And uh, unfortunately, I would say that is the best way of making money, generally speaking, to buy all the businesses. Well, most of them, not that documents of forgery we were talking about. And the air cargo is not really worth it either. But it is worth it to have a hangar because the hangar is, it's great having personal aircraft and the hangar lets you source cargo to your nightclub. Now, if you already have a CEO crate warehouse, then it doesn't do you any good. But if you don't like CEO crates and you're not gonna buy a CEO crate warehouse, but you do want the CEO crates to source to your nightclub, you can buy a hangar. And then you, then it'll source cargo for your nightclub, which is really nice. On top of that, the hangar obviously gives you another business, which is not really worth running. And uh, it's not a bad business, but it's not a good business, the air freight cargo. And uh, it gives you the ability to have personal aircraft, which in my opinion is a good handy thing. It actually gives your, your, your character an ability, basically, which is uh, the air vehicles. You can go in here and request personal aircraft, which is handy. There are times when a personal aircraft comes in handy. Yeah. I think I said handy a couple times. Doubling my words lots today. <laughs> oh well, we're getting through everybody. We're getting through. <laughs> I didn't want to wait one more day for this uh, laid back grinding. I was trying to get it going, but it's hard to do laid back grinding because um, you need a few hours to do it, right? In my opinion, I don't like breaking it up. So, so sometimes things get in my way or things happen. It's hard to find a window of a few hours to do it sometimes. Yeah. All right, so here we are at the bunker. And in the bottom right corner, you guys can see the value is 140,000. That's my normal value when I come here. Now, um, the value you usually sell, like most businesses, you make more money when you go to sell it because you should always do the out of town sell, the distant sell. So let's, uh, let's log in here and have a look here. You guys can see what I mean. So I'll just leave it on the home screen here. You guys can see I've made a ton of money here. So this one's uh, coming on the, on the way to $50 million out of, the, out of this bunker. It's pretty awesome. Now, 188 sales might sound like a lot, but they're quick and easy sales. Let's resupply it. So resupply, I usually do this way. Unless, uh, now, you can steal supplies, and that is a good way to unlock uh, better prices for, um, uh, like, unlock the missions, I should say, for vehicles through your MOC. For some of you guys, hopefully know what I mean. There is uh, gun running vehicles that you can get a better trade price on by running the MOC missions. And uh, I believe to unlock those MOC missions, you need to steal supplies. But after you're done that kind of stuff, in my opinion, you should always be buying supplies. It's nice and easy, and uh, you can make more money than you're, than you're costing by, by running missions and other stuff in the meantime while it's building back up. So we're going to buy supplies. Now, this is kind of a what part of this week's event. I think it gives me 25% off sales off the price of uh, bunker supplies right now. So it's normally 75000 and I'm going to buy that. All right, so for me, like you guys have seen, I usually um, come in here and I, I call it usually a one-stop shop. So I usually come in, order my supplies, and then I sell what's here. And then that way I don't have to come in here twice or check in on it any other time. I just drop in once. One supplies in, sell what's here. Come back next time, order more supplies, sell what's there. Come back next time, sell supply, or order supplies, sell what's there. This is ready every two hours and 20 minutes for the, for the one crate, for the one $75,000 worth of supplies. Okay, now you can fine tune it. Um, I'm doing this usually alone and solo, so you can have up to $175,000 in base value. So let me just pop out of here, and that's that $140,000 in the bottom right corner. So you can have that go up to $175,000 if you want to, and you'll and uh, you'll still get one single cell vehicle. As it goes above $175,000, you start getting two vehicles. I believe around $350,000 you get. Uh, three vehicles and that bar that value bar can go all the way up to 700,000 in value and that can give you up to four cell vehicles so generally speaking for solo players I recommend just one supplies in one supplies out it's nice and easy and it does not give you any bonus or or uh, or penalty so there's no reason to sell more or less it's whatever you like selling 
Now, because I'm usually doing this alone, I like to keep it easy, one single vehicle. So like I said, I order in my supplies and then I sell what's there. And normally it's, it can vary because it's kind of weird. It's a rock star game, like I said, <laughs> bugs and glitches. Sometimes I have a little bit more, sometimes I have a little bit less and I have no idea why. <laughs> it's just randomly does it, I don't know. Most of the time I make extra, so I guess that's a good thing, I guess. So we're gonna sell that to 210,000 to the city. Let's go. And I'll talk about it some more as we get going. Let's see what Agent 14 has for us today. Oh, Marshall. A Marshall monster truck. Okay, these buyers can't be seen to touch down on U.S. soil, so they're picking up the shipments at altitude. Get your Marshall off-roader and get to the site. All right, away we go. So where are we going today over to this site? There's a few different spots that they can send you for this. Uh, hmm, let's try that one. That one's kind of a little circle, you know, that little, um, all those targets. So usually they're, they're kind of in a half moon pattern and you would pick whichever one's closest to you and, and then you would just go over there and then run it in a half circle pattern, right? And get them all done quickly. But sometimes when they're in a pattern like, uh, like you just seen for me now, um, it's hard to say which way is going to be best, which one's going to be best to start with until I get there. Because they're probably on top of hills and stuff, so... Sometimes you can see which ones are easier to get to than others, you know, and just kind of ride which hills uh, connect. Hope you guys, hopefully you guys know what I mean. Basically, plan your route when you get there. Uh, still alone. Good. <laughs> Let's get our handy dandy. Oh, you deserve that. <laughs> handy dandy AP pistol out. There it is. All right, the automatic pistol. Probably my overall favorite vehicle, or favorite weapon in the game, like as far as uh, handheld weapons goes. Maybe it's just the most useful. I don't, know. I don't know if I'd call it favorite, but yeah, probably call it most useful, not favorite. It's not exactly show, but it's a great, great weapon. You know, very accurate, very cheap. You know, it only shoots pistol rounds. Um, it's automatic or single shot. You can use it inside vehicles or uh, on foot. Um, when you're on foot, it doesn't slow you down like assault rifles do and things like that. So you can keep running at full speed. Yeah, I guess it's just a pistol. So it's a great, great gun. Definitely recommend it with the extended clip. All right, so yeah, like I said, so we make uh, 210,000 on this is what it told us. 210,000 for doing the far sale. Now, I was saying earlier that you, any businesses that give you the choice, you should always do the far sale, um, the out of town sale, whatever it wants to call it. All those different businesses, the MC businesses and the bunker, they give you an extra 50% profit for selling the far sale. And that 50% is a lot of extra money. And that's pure profit that doesn't cost you anything extra. So I would definitely recommend doing the far sale every time and not the in town close sale, unless you really want to be safe or quick. But I find it's generally almost the same amount of time anyway. Might as well go for the big money. Yep. Yeah, so 210000 But I put in $75,000 worth of uh, supplies. The last time, I suppose you could say. The last time I was there before this one. So every time I run this mission, it profits me $135,000. And sometimes they're really quick, easy missions too. Like sometimes it's just bring the car here and that's it, you know, and the surgeon to a spot and that's that's all you're and you're done. Nice easy hundred thirty five thousand. Okay, so these missions once you do the drop, they bring in two buzzards and they start harassing you as these guys are just about to do. You can shoot them down. I think there's eight buzzards in total that will come at you, so two waves of two at a time until you kill eight of them. But I also find that you really can ignore them for the most part, too. Hopefully they don't get me this time. But most of the time, they're more of an annoyance than an actual threat. Trying to make my way around over here. Maybe I should have went for the other ones first, but I decided these ones, so... We've committed now. Yeah, now if you are going to fight those buzzards, it's a good idea to shoot the pilot, because that'll take out the whole thing. 
Now another, you know, if you if you become sharpshooter enough, a uh, great uh, tip too is to shoot out the gunner, and then the pilot can't do anything to you. He'll just follow you around uselessly. So it's up to you which way you want to go, but a lot of people find it's easier just to shoot the pilot and then he's done and he crashes and it's a few moments before you get another one. But if you do happen to kill the gunner by accident, and it's just a pilot flying around, I'd say leave them be, and then those those pilots can't hurt you, and it will not spawn in any new ones, because you haven't killed the old one. And they just harmlessly flies around. Now, just so you guys know, well, this is probably one of the harder routes. Usually it's easier hills than this one. And usually these guys don't hit me as much as they are this time. So I'm kind of intentionally showing you guys that you can kind of ignore them. But they usually don't even hurt me as much as they are this time. Yeah, they killed my tiny bit of body armor and half my life. So this is probably one of the worst times I've had in the Marshall. And as you can see, I'm easily still doing it, even in the worst time. Done. Cargo Bob will take it away. I don't know why they need me to do the circle around, just for the Cargo Bob to come up. <laughs> Why can't we just use our Gargle Bob and do it for them, or they could just pick us up and have it all done, but uh, best not to question these things, <laughs> like we said before. Rockstar and Logic don't go together. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give it this handy dirt bike to get away with. And, uh, I think it was Gravesite who was saying it. Was it Gravesite? Yeah. You were saying that you, didn't, you couldn't keep these ones, and you were right. You cannot keep these dirt bikes, which I find annoying. You can steal these dirt bikes. Just so you guys know, you can keep these dirt bikes. You can steal these dirt bikes, but you cannot keep the one after the mission. So the one it just gave me now. So if I went and found another dirt bike just like this one, I could keep it. But this one, from the mission, I can't. Which to me is dumb. <laughs> Look at that. All deliveries received. Now let's just hope they know how to use them. Right? Alright. Thank you, Agent 14. Yeah, so I think that's kind of dumb. Because I'd like to keep on one of these ones. Uh, I, I don't know, to you guys it might be the same difference, but uh, I'm one of those people that kind of likes, um, like wherever I can help it, I like having a, a, a story to things, you know, like uh, like I got this bike from a booker sale, you know, it would be better than a bike you just found somewhere, you know. I don't know. Just a minor detail, so I guess it's not, not really important, but... But I just think... Uh, I don't know, there's a bunch of missions where you can't steal their vehicles. And it sometimes it makes sense because they're expensive vehicles, but sometimes it really doesn't make any sense. It's just a dirt bike, you know. Why can't I keep it? Hmm. Oh well, like I said, best not to question Rockstar and <laughs> Logic in the same sentence, because it rarely will make any sense at all. Yeah, no, because of the oppressors, my new favorite bike, my, heat, my uh, health is healing up. See my health healing up? It's almost done. There we go, fully healed. Awesome. Yeah, so if you ride this enough, it becomes your favorite bike. And as your favorite bike, it'll heal you. And it also becomes tougher. Like, you'll you'll be less likely to fall off. Now, you generally can't fall off the Oppressor Mark II very easily anyway. But uh, it, having a, it be your favorite bike uh, helps with a lot of things. Yeah. So, let's see. Now we got more sales to do. We got a bunker. We got our car. Hmm, well, I do like a quick head under round. And we haven't done that yet. So... We've done the lots of those in the past, but I'm a big head under fan. It's one of my favorite missions in the game, part of the CEO or VIP menu, as you guys just seen. So, you know, secure your menu, VIP work, and head under. I find it's a great mission for head testing out your uh, military hardware and practicing um, killing things on the ground. You know, if you're not very good at it or you want to get good for uh, PvP. Now, again, fighting against other players is much harder, much different. But when you're a newbie, it's good to have these little missions to get better at it first, before you're having to face off with a real person. It definitely gives you a, a, an idea of how your vehicles perform, you know. So I like this one. We've got a head under guide on our, uh, on our channel. You guys can find that on there somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like I said, if you launch this mission always from the city, it'll give you four targets that are always in the city. Although sometimes they try to escape, like this one right here. He's trying to get away. I usually launch two oppressor missiles. That takes them out. Wait for them to get out, and then take out the VIP. And away we go. All right, so there's four targets. Two of them are mobile, are cars, armored cars. 
and two of them are stationary. So they'll be um, parked somewhere or standing somewhere. Once you run this mission all, enough times, like I have, you get really used to it, where all the spots are, and you can uh, not memorize it, but, uh, but you know, become very efficient at it, very proficient at it. Two missiles. Let's wait for them to start getting out, and missile. Good. There we go. You do not need to kill the bodyguards. They are not worth any money or RP or anything. It's all about the VIP, which has that little red um, icon above them. I don't know if you guys can see that. See my red targeter right now for my missile? That's the little red spot right in the middle of it. That's the VIP. You can just barely see the red spot hanging above his head. Oh, Retarget up again. That's it. Easy $20,000. And like I said earlier, again, everything you guys are seeing, you could do faster. So I'm kind of taking my time and talking away. So a lot of these missions I could do much quicker than you've seen. And I'm just saying that so that you guys know you would be quicker than me. <laughs> Yapping and rambling away like I am and getting lost here and there. <laughs> it's hard to do all these things at the same time sometimes. <laughs> all right so we got a lot of mc businesses left to go now and we've done our uh we've done uh, uh, all our ceo stuff well, that's that's kind of nice let's see uh, i could call in my own personal cargo bob but i think we'll use pegasus so we're gonna go sell a ceo car hello pegasus lifestyle management how can i help you Thank you, sir. Your spectacular aircraft is now ready for you at our nearest airfield. Uh, right in there. A little more coffee. It says it's here, but I don't think it is. Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes it's good to hang back a little bit to get it to spawn properly. I think I was a little too close. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I guess today we're going through a bunch of the bugs and glitches, like I was saying earlier. So, sometimes it'll spawn right on you so that you crash right into it. <laughs> so I'm trying to see if I can get that to happen, but that's not going to happen. So, we're going to call Pegasus again. It's kind of annoying. It says it's there. It's going to stay like that forever, unless I call it again. And it lies. It's not there. So we're going to pull back over here. Hello, this is Pegasus Lifestyle Call Management. Again. How can I help? There we go. Your beautiful new aircraft is waiting at our nearest airfield. We hope you're very happy, sir. There we go. All right. So yeah, sometimes it's a good idea if you're calling in stuff for the uh, um, for a certain spawn site. It's a good idea to uh, hang back a little bit so that you can avoid what hap uh, that glitch happening to you. What just happened to me? go drop down our thing okay so this is the cargo bob helicopter i definitely recommend it when you can afford it if you're getting into the ceo car business so we've got a guide all about that um it is episode 185 so episode 185 so you guys uh, who haven't watched that might want to check it out if you want to learn more about how to do the uh, top range only for the ceo car warehouse and uh, later on, I also have episodes on how to use the Cargo Bob. So I really like using the Cargo Bob. I find that you can use it on almost all the car sourcing missions and on car selling as well. It uh, saves you time and generally saves uh, profit by saving you damage. Any damage costs, costs uh, profit. So the Cargo Bob, usually you avoid a ton of damage over time. And uh, I think it pays for itself. That's too bad I didn't uh, check it at the office. Maybe we'll check it later. But my CEO car warehouse that you guys are seeing right here that I'm standing inside of, it's uh, it, it's maybe about $61 million right now. Yeah, so pretty good amount. Yeah, $61 million. I think it's uh, the single most profiting business by chance. You know, I wouldn't feed into the amounts too much, guys, from me because uh, I kind of do whatever I feel like and whatever the mood strikes right and whatever we're doing. So, And sometimes uh, for YouTube episodes, we check out this and we check out that. So a lot of these these numbers, you guys could make more than I'm showing you. Uh, much easier, I'm sure, over time. Yeah, so this is the CEO car warehouse. Now we'll run that down quickly. But like I said, you guys can check out uh, episode 185 if you want a better rundown. So I'll just quickly go through this, and if you want, you can 
back up the video and uh, and have me repeat myself over and over until you get what I'm saying or switch over to that episode 185. <laughs> but the CO car warehouse, yeah, you buy one and how to get top range only. Now the top range cars uh, sell for 100,000 and they cost 20,000 to get ready. So that means $80,000 profit every time you run it. So um, like I said before, the bunker makes 135,000 every mission. So I like the bunker that way. It's actually a little bit better than the car warehouse, comparatively speaking, mission to mission. But the car warehouse is better because you can actually run three cars per hour. So once every 20 minutes, you can sell a car. So in theory, you could sell a top range car for $80,000 um, three times every hour. Yeah. Now, how to get the top range only? I'm just going to blaze through this because you guys can check out that episode if you want to. But uh, basically, there are 32 different types of cars like this that you can source to your car warehouse. 32 different cars. And those cars have three different paint jobs that you can get. To some people, they call it three different license plates. So that's a total of 96 different variations that you can get. Of, so 32 cars, 96 variations. Okay, your car warehouse, in case you're wondering, can store 40 cars. What you want to do is keep every car you get to make sure you have one of each type of the 32 cars. Once you have all 32 cars, you know, individually, no, no duplicates. Once you have all 32 cars, the car you sell next, it should give you the same car over and over. So you would sell a top range car at that point, and it would give you that same car type over and over. Now, I'll explain some more here when we get into the uh, the laptop here. So let me just have a seat here. So a way you can track that that makes it a little easier to see is on the screen here inside your warehouse. So these are all the cars right here, all the 32 different types of cars. Now I'm going to go over to collection screen here. Now I find the collection screen is an easier way to track it. So you can see all the cars here and it'll tell you any that are missing. Now, right now I do have this car, but it's the other type. We'll get to that in a second. So basically, here's all the 32 different types of cars. You want to keep each one. Now, some people, some of you guys have commented here and there in the past that you've had trouble getting certain cars or it keeps giving the wrong ones. What I would recommend is keep the cars. So say it keeps giving you this car and the other types of paint jobs that it got. Just keep them all. Keep all three. Once you keep, once you have all three of the Sultan RS or the Jester or the Tropus Rally, uh, it can't give you any more. It can't give you a duplicate car. So keep them in your warehouse and it will stop giving you that car type. Does that make sense? So you'd keep all three types of this and then you wouldn't get the ATR one anymore. Now I would recommend personally, this is just an added tip on top of everything. I would recommend keeping the collection cars because they're the most valuable cars. So if you're going to keep a car, why not click the, the valuable one? And it also makes it easier to tell which ones you've sold and where you're at because it'll be missing on your collection screen. So I usually sell 811s. And you can see I'm missing it because it's on the 811 screen. So I can tell it's it's short. Now, I'm not actually missing it. It's a different paint job. But let me switch over here. See, that's the 811 right here. So, um, you know, it might be a little confusing, but as you do what I just said, you know, it becomes easier as you go along. Or watch episode 185. So we're going to export that. Click that. And it has a, a wait of every 20 minutes. Like I said, three per hour. It'll usually show you that wait timer right around here if I had any uh, cooldown timer left. That cooldown timer does not clear when you reload the game. So if you if you sell a car and then quit the game, when you come back, you'll still have to wait 20 minutes. So when you unlike other missions, when you reload the game, it still remembers the 20 minute timer. Let's get to work. All right, let's get to work. So we're gonna get this ready. No one's looking for that plate. The changes you make in here don't really matter. But I do find it's a great way to test different paint jobs. You know, as a lot of people complain about, uh, Rockstar charges you money if you do it live in GTA Online. So this is a great way to uh, play with different paint jobs and stuff like that without it costing you any money. So I kind of like it for that. I am paid well below but I'm in the mood for it. Get some tinted windows and custom roof. Why not? Oh, street skirts can't resist. All right, there we go. Wouldn't recognize it. Okay, high end chrome. And sure, Carbon Inferno, why not? All right, guys, away we go. So that's it. You don't need to do any more than that. You probably didn't even do less than what I just did. <laughs> From there, I jump right out. And then I go over to my cargo box. Okay, after what we put into this one, we don't want it to go wrong. Take the car to the sale, and if another crew comes after it, do everything you can to stop them. All right, up, up, and away. So we've already got our hook already down. Up. 
Oh, oh. That's not the way to pick it up. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we're alone. Alright, so we're still alone. Did I just hit that on the building? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't do that, guys. That's bad. <laughs> so, uh, I'm in the middle of telling you guys how the cargo bob saves you damage. Yeah. Well, only when you don't do things like that. <laughs> anyway, so, getting going. So, uh, I was saying that we're alone, and that means that AI attackers, the NPC attackers, will appear. So there's, there's, I don't know, I guess you could say gang attackers that'll show up two cars at a time. And I think for a total of eight of them, eight cars in total, I believe, on a top-range car, and they will come at me. Now, as long as I'm up in the air, in the cargo bob, we don't have to really worry about that at all. Although, if you're low enough, they can still spawn, so watch out for that. So, um, the cargo bob tends to avoid all that. Now, if there was somebody in here with us, then there would be no AI attackers at all. So it is kind of handy having a friend with you, or even somebody that's, you know, doing their grinding while you are, and then you don't have to worry about those uh, attackers spawning against you at all. Now, if you guys are interested, um, on our, our site in the playlists, there is uh, videos on how to sell uh, with no damage using the Cargo Bob, and we, I also have a video on how to sell the cars on the ground with no damage, too. So that's a little bit longer way. I recommend the Cargo Bob. But in short, you would basically set up a little ambush. So you would drive the, the, the car that we're, we're uh, selling right now. We would drive it to a little spot that's protected just around the corner from our car warehouse. We'd call in um, a Karuma or something like that, or we'd just uh, simply take cover. The cars would show up to attack us, the NPC attackers. You'd kill them all, then you'd jump back in the car, drive to the cell point, and hopefully you avoided any damage. And profit loss. Because this is all about the money anyway, right? All about the monies. Dollars and cents. But I definitely prefer the Cargo Bob way. Easy, fast, and usually no damage. <laughs> usually. Alright, so that's a CEO car. Usually it only takes about five minutes to source one and bring it to your warehouse, and usually about five minutes, well, less than, to sell it. And a nice, quick, easy $80,000 in profit. All right, that is that. Well done out there. Thanks, Benny. <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right, guys. So I think that we're going to do the MC stuff. I think I'm going to take a very, very quick break. Go get my water refilled here, and maybe top up my coffee, and then we're going to go sell all the MC stuff. Yep, I've got all the MC businesses to go, and maybe we'll run a few more missions in the middle of that too. I guess I might as well change sessions while we're at it anyway, right? Yeah, might as well. See, by doing that, I avoid the bills. Like I was telling you guys earlier, if I join my MC right now, so I'm going to retire here, and I'm not going to do it, because that would defeat the point of warning you guys, <laughs> but if I join my MC right now, it's going to charge me $30,000 immediately for all my employees, my bills. So if you've been in a session for more than an hour, or more than 50 minutes, more than one in-game day, it'll charge you bills. If you want to avoid that small little fee, well, not really all that small, 30000 but if you want to avoid that, just simply reload to a different session, or reload the game, and then I won't have to pay the bill. Usually I just change session if I can help it. Alright, well I'm going to go let Penny in on the new money. She can make sure it's all adding up right. And then I'll come right back to you guys for the uh, rest of the MC uh, business selling. Yeah. I'll see you guys back here in a minute. For the rest. <laughs> 